Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech, and today I wanted to talk about a quick starter kit that I made for LogSeq. You can download the zip file, the link is in the description down below. And let's get to it and see what you get. So quick overview, and that is that I have things about books, companies, context projects, and task lists. And on the bottom, you see my workflow. We're gonna go through each one quickly, though I'm gonna group a couple because they're basically the same. But if you use my template, then if you go to Tools on Tech, you will find a getting started page and that will take you through the same steps. There also will be a video in here, but it's not right now because, well, I'm recording it and I can't time travel. Let's start with the my page as a point of starting out. So the reason why I have this my page is because I want to remove the views from the data. One of the problems that I have is that if I make something like a book and I put all my overview in there, then a book becomes very busy because everything that links will be part of the references and I don't like that. So what I do is I make something called my books and that one is just the query that shows me the total overview of elements. Then let's have a look at my workflow. And my workflow is a page that I use to basically show myself what elements I have. Things that are in there are references to my, so my, my base overview, my context, my projects, though I don't really update that that much because I add them to my favorites or constantly use them anyway, so they're part of my head. It's mostly for me to keep track of the tags, my purpose with them and to think about them. And so I have a couple. Uh, one is the hashtag NF that you see here, which means no filter. And that one I use when I have filters where I want to filter out certain elements because they get in the way of the total view. For example, I want to filter out a template or I want to filter out one or two elements that are not really related to the setup or I already processed. And I just add this tag and in my query I say not and then the NF tag and remove them. Other things that I use a lot, and this is also where you already see, I added the NF tag here because all these tags, I don't want these tags to be showing up when I make the total list for them. So now if I make a list for visit, I could make a query set like, hey, take a set of visit, but don't show me the NF ones. Visit here uh, is when I visit someone in person and I make notes afterwards. Call is for when I get called by someone and I make some notes afterwards. Meeting is when I'm actually in a meeting, usually a Zoom or Teams call with multiple people. And finally, ideas. Anytime I have an idea for a YouTube video or a tweet or maybe even something else, anything that pops up in my head, I just ram it into my journal and mark it with the hashtag idea. And that groups those things together and allows me to go back in time. I use mostly meeting and ID in practice, but you know, to each their own. Then I have the to-do tags, and the to-do tags are very much things that I need to do, and I want to tag because I want to group them. So I personally have a couple of examples here. One is the hashtag research that I use for anything that I need to do research on. So stuff I want to read, I want to go through Google. It's a certain mindset when I feel like, hey, I want to dive into some of these research topics. Then I have got the hashtag play, and that one's more for when I don't feel like doing anything. Uh, super productive. I just want to mess around with things. Very often things like code, new applications that I want to try or play with that I found interesting, maybe even some small games, but that usually is more my free time set and I don't need to put that into like a hashtag play. Then whiteboard and a whiteboard very much is needed in my case because I have things that I want to whiteboard out. I want to think about them but the problem that i have is the whiteboard is over here and not at home so by grouping them together i know like hey i'm near the whiteboard now i want to do some free thinking and writing down i look up the tasks that are marked whiteboard and then the final tag that i have in here is the hashtag process and i use those when i make notes and i don't have time to clean them up right away. So I know this is important, I need to process this, but I need to do it either today or tomorrow because after that I'll probably forget the details that I need to keep value into this note. So then I do a to-do process there and at the end of the day I check if there's any to-do process left and if that's the case then I go through that and make sure that all the stuff that is in my head is in my notes because if I try to do that a week later, I will have forgotten everything that was relevant and the note loses its value. Right, so after the workflow comes, how do I deal with my tasks? 
and dealing with my task, I do with a task list page. So let's go there. I say my task list. I'm very bad at typing today. And in the task list, I have a couple of queries to sort for things that I want to do. And they're based on priority. So you get like priority A, B, C, and other tasks. And they filter out the elements that are in there. And ABC is a bit loosely based on the Eisenhower matrix. This is also part of the template, this small overview where either things are urgent and important, I need to do them now, which is A, then they're less urgent, but they are important. B, they are less important, but still urgent. C, and the rest, which you normally should delete, but very often they stick around because, well, you know, there's always things that you want to do and that are not a priority right now, but you still want to remember them. And then by going through this list, I can go in this list and just go top to bottom and figure out what do I want to do next in the order of priority. You can build your own setup, but that's the whole goal of the task list. Just have a large list in the order of things, how important they are to you. Now, how do I use this? Uh, very often what I do is if I go to my journal, I have a uh, task list for the day and a lock. And I usually have an agenda, but we'll leave that one out. And to decide what I'm going to do that day, I'm going to go to my task list and I'm opening it with shift. So by shift clicking on it, it opens on the side and then I can just scroll and work top to bottom. Now, normally this one's full with uh, different types of tasks, but if I scroll down, then at least I can find some other tasks and say like, okay, I need to set up a project page, for example, but this is part of a template. So maybe that should be part of my NF filter. Um, and then normally I would do Ctrl C to make a block copy, go to my task list and add it here. And this way, and you see like the uh, one getting added in the end here, I have a log saying like, okay, I scheduled to do it on that day because I can click to this one and it will show me exactly like, hey, April 15, I put it on my task list. And then if I want to work on it later that day, I usually take that same element and I say like, hey, work on uh, demo in video. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then you can also see back in the task list that I got this small log thing that starts generating that shows like, oh yeah, I was working on it and I added this. And this is how I use my task. This is a very short version. I'm gonna make a dedicated video on my task list usage, but this is one of the ways that I keep track of the tasks that I do, what work has been done. And if they are done, of course, because if I mark any of these done, then they get marked done everywhere, as you can see, because they are links and not copies. Great. So that's the task list. Now I'm going to show you the books, and they're basically the same as the contacts and the companies. So if I go to my books, then what you see is you see a book and you see information there, and you can decide on the end which fields you want to see, and they're based on a template. So if I click on this book, then the details are here and say, I wanted to add a different book. So I'm going to go and say, I'm going to make a book and I'm going to call it the Martian and then use a template. So I go to template. The templates are part of this as well. I pick book and then I can add information. So on the side, I can give it an alias. I usually give it the alias of the actual name. And the reason I do that is that it's a book, so it becomes part of the book namespace. That means that if there's a movie, I can have a different page that's called Movie The Martian. And the alias is for anything that I wanna group. So I can't both name them The Martian, but I could also rename this one and say like The Martian, I always refer to the book, and then with the movie, I add something behind it. This is personal and this is still knowledge management for yourself. Then the author uh, and the where, I believe. Add all the information that you need. You can replace this part with a URL from Goodreads so you have an actual image. And just don't touch this part then because that means that the size stays the same for all the books, meaning your table has a nice overview. Now, the summary has a small GIF in it because I enjoy messing around a little bit. And then I can put the summary. So a man gets left on Mars and complains about it, which is basically a summary of this excellent book. Um, of course, he also finds a solution, but that's outside the point here. And then if I go to book, you get the same thing that I mentioned earlier, that it says like, hey, this one's just confused because it gets like a lot of stuff here. And I go to my books for my overview, and that shows me the book, and there's no image because I didn't add an image yet. And this is the same thing for my contacts. 
which is also an overview of contacts. My contact information is there. So if you want to reach out, you can find that information. And this is filled in. So if I go to the page, you can see all the details here on the side. And it's the same for companies. And I can even go there straight from here, I believe, because it should have company in here. So now I open my company page, just type company. And that one also has its own link and pages. So, and again, overview of all the companies I have. You can add your own properties. I put a couple of examples in the templates, things like address and city, but nothing more. Oh yeah, website, I think, but nothing really up detail because it's very personal and you, prop, adding properties is easy enough. You can just add it to the template. Now, how do you change the templates? If you look for template and say, for example, I want to do the company template, then they are all under my templates, meaning that they're easy to find. You can just type in something like template book. And if you do that, then the top hit will usually be my templates book. Looking at the template, you can make any changes you want here, add extra properties, make the summary different, anything that is under it. I also have a section for slip notes. They are all empty in this demo file because there is no journal. Slip notes in my case always come out of my journal. And in this quick start setup, I didn't want to do that because the journal A gets outdated very quickly because the entries are old. Also, the journal is something that would definitely overwrite other people's made up notes from that specific day, making it a bad thing to just copy and paste over. And then finally, I have a setup for projects. And I also added an example project, which was the actual project I used to build this. So you can have a look at that and play around with it. So let's have another look at that and go like, hey, I go to projects and then you see my projects and this shows a couple of projects and it shows it in uh, my templates project doing. Let's take the example project that I did and this is what I use for projects. I put a goal in because you need to know when it's done. A couple of things on the top, things like a state, a priority. I use A, B, C, D, but you can also use a number. You can also use Hi, I would highly recommend though to pick something which is either a number or alphabetical because then you can easily sort it in your table view. Another trick that I do here is I add an alias and I always start with P0, P for project and zero because I usually use a number. You can make that number as long as you like. For me, this will be good for the first 99 projects. And the reason I use P0 is because the P and the zero are very close to each other on the keyboard, meaning that if I'm searching for projects, I can just go Ctrl K P zero and I already get like a list of projects. And then in the project, I usually have a task list and all the subtasks under it. And one of the reasons I put those into the project and not inside the journal is that inside the project, I can order them. So I can move stuff up and down. I can make this whole list that I have to work through. And because of filtering, they will come back in my task list overview where I can then pick them up as needed, put them in my day plan and work through them. And then finally, slip notes, which is empty because of the same reason. And as you see here, like we just made this example where I said like, hey, I'm just going to add this task to my today tasks. You get that little two in the end. And normally when I have large projects with lots of notes while I was doing things, there's a whole row of numbers here showing me everything I did. And this shows me then like, hey, I got it on my task list on April 15th and I was demoing it in the video on April 15th. So this gives you like a backlog for each task that tells you exactly when you worked on it, how you worked on it, what was related to it, just the information you need to keep going with it, to, to finish up that task or to tell people, uh, for example, handovers or the work done if you have to report back on it during something like a daily standup. Okay, so if you get the zip file, there's two ways you can use it. First of all, you can use whatever zip archive manager you have to just extract it. So I'm saying extract here. I get the file. You can also open it and drag it out. It's all very dependent on the OS that you're using. And then this folder itself, you can open it by adding a new graph in LogSeq. So I go to LogSeq, I say add new graph. I say go to downloads. I pick the file directory and I click open. Voila, you can mess around with this play and you don't have to worry about breaking anything. Now the second method, is that you want to add it towards your existing graph. If that's the case, you have to be a little bit more careful because you might just overwrite something. So what I'm doing, I'm going to open the zip file. I'm going to go in there and I got the pages and assets folder. Those two things I want to copy towards my directory. I'm doing Ctrl C here. 
gonna go to the demo template I have here and I'm just gonna drag these over and any good operating system and I'm pretty much sure Ubuntu here does it, uh, most Linux do it, Windows does it and Apple does it, we'll say like, hey, are you sure you wanna replace these file? And it should only ask that for the content markdown file because that's the only one that's really not that unique. Um, I would highly recommend that you make a backup for beforehand and after that, that you still do something like replace nothing or extract with the, each individual file. The rest of the files will then be extracted. You'll be able to see them because if you go into pages, see a whole bunch of these, my namespace and tools on tech namespace pages. And at that point in time, you can go to logseek, open, uh, let's see, I have a demo here and go there and do a quick re-index because there's a lot of files changed on the disk. At that point in time, you'll be able to mess around and go towards my getting started page. So let's see if it's there. Tools on tech getting started. And then there's the information to get you started. So that's a quick rundown of this template that I built. The link is in the description down below. Be sure to check it out. If you have any questions, my email is inside the template. You can just straight up email me and ask things. I'm going to use all the feedback to improve this thing over time. It's always going to be free. It is meant for people to get started and have like a basic structure when they start out on their Logseek journey. See you in the next one. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.